It's got just about the worst reviews of any MCU movie or TV show, but it may factor into the new movie, The Marvels. So I figured it was finally time to sit down and watch Secret Invasion. Hey guys, Dan here. This is Dan Reviews It. Welcome to my TV review for the Disney Plus miniseries Secret Invasion. This is uh, the first of the TV shows uh, in Marvel's Phase 5. They've already knocked out a couple of the movies in Phase 5. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and then of course the Marvels, uh, which is new to theaters. But uh, Secret Invasion is the first of the shows for uh, Phase 5. It's it's so hard to keep track anymore of what's going on. But uh, before we launch into the specifics here of uh, the program and my thoughts on it, let me welcome you into the channel. Thank you for finding this video on Dan Reviews It. Uh, please consider subscribing. We would love to have you aboard uh, in that capacity. And I try to post something new, uh, movie or TV related, just about every day. So always a lot to check out. Click that notification bell to uh, get the alerts for when I drop new videos. Um, but other than that, let's, uh, let's, boy, let's talk about this thing. Secret Invasion, like I said, it's getting, uh, pretty bad reviews. Um, so I, I sort of have taken my time, uh, you know, in, in watching it and, I really, I'm kind of over uh, Marvel stuff. You know, I, I still have to finish Ms. Marvel uh, before I go see the new movie, The Marvels, because um, I know that's going to factor in heavily. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sort of burned out on uh, the Marvel stuff. But on the TV side of things, I think uh, they've mostly been pretty good. I think the lowest I've rated one of their shows is, is maybe a B. Um, so I, I'm, I'm all in for the TV series, but, uh, this came out and the reviews started pouring in horribly. Um, I think it's currently sitting at a 48% on, uh, Rotten Tomatoes with critics and, and right around there with audiences too. But, uh, the basic premise here is, uh, Nick Fury is back from uh, a few years, uh, being gone after the blip. Uh, he came back, but then went to space for a little while, uh, and now he's he's back, and uh, he is joining forces with Talos, who uh, re repeats his role from the Captain Marvel film from 2019, uh, played by Ben Mendelsohn, um, and they are uh, uncovering a conspiracy uh, of shape-shifting Skrulls who are trying to start World War III. And that's sort of, um, you know, it picks up a little bit from where Captain Marvel left off. I, I don't honestly remember Captain Marvel very well. Um, sort of got lost in the shuffle of, of all of the, the various MCU things. Um, and it was, at this point, four years ago. Um, but we had scrolls in that, so that that sort of uh, storyline continues uh, with this. And um, Nick Fury, you know, we haven't really seen much of him uh, recently. So, you know, it was nice to see him back, of course. Samuel L. Jackson uh, portrays him, of course. Uh, Olivia Coleman is in this as well to bring uh, some gravitas. Kingsley, Ben Adir, uh, Killian Scott, Dermot Mulroney plays the president. Uh, Amelia Clark from uh, Game of Thrones. Don Cheadle is here as well. Um, of course, he is no stranger to the MCU. Um, and, and in terms of plot-wise, I think really that's all I'm going to talk about um, because there are some things that uh, if you are interested in seeing this, um, you know, I, I don't want to spoil things for you, but, um, you know, certain people uh, do die uh, that, that I was a little surprised by. I can say that at least. Um, but I did watch all six episodes of this. Um, you know, sometimes with, with the TV reviews, I only watch like the first two or three episodes, kind of get a sample, but uh, I really wanted to finish this before I see the Marvels, um, in case there is anything I sort of needed to know here. So I did watch all six episodes and oddly the finale is, I think the shortest episode. It's only like a half hour, 28 minutes, something like that. Um, and most of these episodes are a little over 40 minutes. So usually you have the opposite. The, the finale is like the, the extended episode, you know, over an hour or whatever. Um, but here the they sort of went the opposite with it. I, I'm not sure <laughs> what the story was there, whether that was uh, budget constraints or they just thought they could, you know, tell the story better that way or, or whatever. Um, so look, I, I think a lot of the criticism of this show has been um, either with the pacing or um, the, the stakes maybe, uh, you know, being a, a little bit, not that they, they're not high. I mean, World War Three, obviously, you know, 
happening. But, you know, in the Marvel movies, that's always sort of on the cusp, right? Um, so we've come to expect that. Um, but look, I, you know, I, I so I went into this with, with pretty low expectations, and I will be honest, I think it is the worst of the Marvel shows, but I think it's far better than uh, some of the recent Marvel movies. Um, you know, Thor 4, for example, Love and Thunder, or Doctor Strange 2, those were both horrible. The Eternals was very bad. Um, you know, I've gone over those on different videos. But, um, you know, so yeah, I, I would say this is the worst of the TV shows that we've gotten so far from the MCU. But I think it is better than some of the recent output for sure. Samuel L. Jackson, you know, as always, gives this great performance. Uh, you know, his Nick Fury is always kind of missed uh, by me when he is not in one of the movies. He is, uh, you know, sort of the glue in, in some aspects that holds the entire MCU together, um, especially now that, um, you know, certain characters have passed away in some of the movies and after Endgame and stuff, you know, he's he's one of the, the constants, um, you know, from those early Marvel movies that, that is still, you know, kicking. Um, and yes, the, you know, there is sort of an ongoing... Um, I don't even know if you want to call it sort of inside joke or whatever, but you know, there, there's a lot of barbs about how old he is and grumpy he is now. And, um, you know, all of this, oh, you know, space made you really cranky or, or you know, whatever. Um, and there's, there's not really humor in this, which is why I, I even hesitate to call it like an inside joke kind of thing. Um, cause this is, this is one Marvel thing that is almost devoid of humor. You know, this is, um, pretty serious stuff. Olivia Coleman adds a little levity with her sort of dry British wit. Um, she's great in this too. My God. Um, you know, it's, it's surprising. It took her so long to be part of the MCU because boy, she, she fits right in. Um, but look, you know, I think, and, and I didn't read, you know, a ton of the reviews saying like what the problems with this were, but, um, I, I'm wondering if some of it is that this is a bit different for what we're used to from a Marvel property. This is really more of a spy thriller um, involving aliens, though. So, it's, you know, it's not necessarily a, a grounded spy thriller, but there's not a lot of, like, you know, superhero uh, fight scenes and, and all that kind of stuff here that we would get with nor normal Marvel stuff because Nick Fury is not... Uh, a superhero, really. Um, I mean, he sort of is, I, I guess, um, but not in the same way as, you know, Captain America or something like that. So, um, so this is a more, uh, it's weird to say, but grounded series um, than I think a lot of the Marvel things that we've seen, especially lately, as we're getting more and more into the, sort of the fantastical. But look, Secret Invasion, you know, was a, a comic book series. Uh, maybe still is. I, I don't know, to be honest. Um, so it, it's not like they've just plucked this out of thin air. I mean, this is an already existing uh, storyline and everything. The scrolls, you know, have existed. Um, and and I, I, I kind of like this show. I mean, it's not great. Um, you know, the downside is certainly you know like the the cgi is not good and they spent a lot of money making this show too uh 200 million dollars i believe but cgi you know is not great when they do have those fight scenes um you know because samuel jackson and, and you know as a result nick fury are sort of getting on in years um he's not directly involved in a lot of the the fight stuff anyway he's more of the dramatic part of this and, and the more conversational aspects of this. Um, but to be honest, you know, it, it's okay. Him and Olivia Coleman certainly hold this thing together, um, you know, more than certain other people might have. Um, and and the, the flaws here, yes, they're, they're fairly evident. The plot is a bit convoluted and um, people are, are pretty stupid not to know who's a scroll and who's not. Um, and I do think that the show tips his hand a little early uh, about some of the people that are scrolls that might have been more fun to kind of let that play out for the audience. So, okay, you could say that about it as well. But overall, I do think it's uh, better than, like I said, some of the, the recent Marvel movies. But yes, it is the worst, I would say, of the TV shows so far. Uh, I will leave Secret Evasion with a C+. Plus. And uh, you can check this out now. All six episodes are streaming on Disney+. Plus. Again, I'm not sure if uh, if and how much it's going to factor into the Marvels, um, but, you know, it, it may be worth a watch anyway, uh, you know, if you're an MCU completist or anything like that. But, um, yeah, we, we will see about that. Uh, but, all right, thank you so much for watching Dan Reviews It, and we'll see you next time. Bye.